Hi, it's teardown time again. This time around, we've got... <sighs> Sorry, bloody mobile. Hang on a sec, gotta get it. <sighs> Hello? Yeah, speaking. <sighs> no! Do not wish to refinance my home loan. Thank you very much. Bloody hell. It's vintage mobile phone time. We're gonna tear down one of these old brick mobile phones from about 20 years ago. This should be awesome. Now, this one I've got is the Motorola Ultra Sleek 9660 uh, Dynatac series it's part of. It's about 1993, maybe 1994 uh, vintage, so it's bordering on 20 years old now. Now it is part of the Dynatac series which started um, in the 80s actually, but this was one of the last, uh, probably if not the last, analog mobile phone, at least from Motorola, on the market. So I thought it'd be interesting tear down to compare this with some even technology from 10 years ago. So this was possibly the smallest and lightest analog mobile phone you could get before they turned uh, digital GSM and all that sort of stuff and technology and miniaturization and RF uh, engineering took over and uh, before the functionality of the phone was actually determined by, the size of the phone was determined by like the user interface and things like that. Back in these days, the battery's huge, the circuitry inside is huge, the antenna's huge, all that analog type stuff replaced by digital technology, which made them much smaller and much lighter as we know today or even from 10 years ago. I'm gonna love this. It's gonna be interesting. Let's go. So you know what we say here on the EEV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. Now, just to give you a bit of size comparison with even moderately uh, modern mobile phones, I've got the uh, Motorola Ultra Sleek 9660, the last of the analog mobile phones here, or what they called a brick mobile phone, because they were the size and the weight of a typical household brick. Um, this is one of the smallest and lightest ones that you can get on the market right at the end of the analog era. So this one, there are they are much bigger and much heavier than this in the original Dynatac series. But compare that, so this is 1994 vintage. Uh, we've got the uh, classic um, uh, Nokia uh, 3310 here, and that's a uh, 2000 vintage. And we've got the uh, Motorola C651 here, about 94 vintage. Or thereabouts and just compare the, the phones it's just absolutely ridiculous but that's the difference that digital uh, communication digital electronics and communication technology made possible you were limited the phone was limited by basically the usability the size of the keypad and the screen those sort of usability factors they could have made them much um, smaller than this and they have um, but they become practically unusable so really you are limited by that user interface usability uh, factor and of course you've got the modern smartphones which have gone up in size again because you want greater usability in these things in terms of uh, watching video and surfing the net and doing all sorts of stuff which wasn't around when these sort of uh, phones, this sort of 2000 uh, vintage, you just wanted to make calls and do SMS and maybe play a little snake game or something like that. But back then, with these analogs, all you wanted to do was make a call. No such thing as SMS back then. Analog mobile phones. In fact, um, these were, so, because they used the analog spectrum, they could, you could actually listen in to people's calls. And I remember using a uh, scanner, one of those Tandy 200 uh, channel scanners. You could actually, I think it was around 800 megahertz or thereabouts, something like that. Don't quote me on that, but you could actually tune in to people's mobile, analog mobile phone conversation. And it was boring as batshit. You know, I'll be home for dinner, dear. One of the big differences you'll notice is the antenna, these old fashioned analog antenna here, which is actually, if you strip that off there, it actually unscrews and there it is. There's the analog antenna specifically designed for that analog spectrum. They've been replaced by invisible antennas somewhere inside these modern 
mobile phones because they're uh, using uh, new advanced uh, fractal antenna technology which can make them ridiculously small so they can squeeze them into these tiny packages and their performance is still brilliant. Amazing technology. Are going to be a similar uh, overall length for a specific uh, wavelength for the frequency they're working on but they can fold back on themselves in a fractal type uh, pattern which means they can get incredibly small geometries. Now let's actually switch the phone on in here and take a quick look at just the user interface. It uses a, a seven segment LED display. I love it. Totally old school. And it's got a seven digit display. That's all they could fit on there. Flashing LED uh, signals there. It's no sync because it obviously can't uh, synchronize with any network. But oh, it's just it's just brilliant. And they've look, it's got auto turn off on the display there. It's still there, but it they turn it off to save power because chewing all of that, uh, those um, LEDs being bright to see them in daylight, you'd have to have those, um, you know, very bright indeed. And they didn't have modern, really ultra bright LED technology 20 years ago either. So they're going to chew a lot of uh, current just to do the display. That's so why they've, uh, presumably, why they've got a quick uh, timeout there on the LED display. But yeah, LCDs, they didn't even, I guess they didn't even think of using them back then. And the antenna here, nice, big, rugged screw-on antenna like that. I love it. Oh, brings back memories. You know, I'm not sure what uh, jack that is on the side. Is that like a headphone jack? I'm not actually uh, sure what that is. It's not external power because the charging comes through these uh, contacts on the back here and the battery, if you get this clip on the bottom like that, bingo, it slides off like that. And there's the very compact charging adapter for it. You slide it right there and it charges the built-in nickel cadmium batteries. NICAD folks, none of this lithium stuff. That's <laughs> a neat sort of design. It slides in there, can't really go wrong. And uh, they're only using one of the, um, uh, they're not using one of the terminals down here. So that's where the battery connects on those two large brass terminals down there. And these terminals up here, my guess for those would be considering that they're not used inside the pack here, would be some sort of a car mount adapter, probably. That'd be my guess. Um, would be, you know, you slide on an optional uh, pack on here, which actually provides power through to the phone, perhaps, and an external antenna, maybe. Check it out. Motorola Inc. manufactured in the United States of America. Ugh, Yanks must be shedding a bit of a tear at the moment. Hand over the heart. <laughs> Singing. The Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Whatever happened to the American manufacturing industry? Another interesting thing to note, look, check it out. They've got the instructions, operating instructions, printed on the back of the phone under the battery. Brilliant. And I see some lovely looking torque screws there. Two up there, two down here. Let's crack this baby open. I love it. They even tell you the tampering with or adjustment of the four, in brackets, screws on the back of this radio will void the warranty. Awesome. Let's void it. Okay, let's see if we can crack this thing open. It's uh, had 20 years to sort of weld itself together. Oh, it's coming apart. Ta-da! Hang on. Antenna up here, getting a bit sticky. Well, it turns out there was a flat flex cable there and I sort of, the, the connector's right down in there and I just sort of uh, yanked at it and <laughs> pulled it straight out. Oops, but uh, don't think I broke anything there. And ta-da, there it is. And of course, the first thing you cop in the face is the lawyer crap manufactured under one or more of the following Motorola US patents. Other patents pending. Beautiful. Dickheads. And of course, something you don't see every day in modern mobile phones is a good old coax cable running up to the antenna uh, board up there, the antenna connector. And as you can see, it's heavily shielded in places. So. Let's take a better look at that and 
this part of the board here, there's a few uh, surface mount uh, components. Few. Look at the angles there. <laughs> they're actually placed on. They're a little bit off there. Um, not the best, but it looks like the RF output is down on the bottom uh, end of the phone, and they're actually uh, sending that all the way through underneath uh, this shielded module here, and they've actually soldered that uh, the outside, the braid shield of the coax directly onto this um, foil here, which we'll have to take a look at what's under there, but they've determined that um, they should actually uh, tack it down in that place. I'm not sure whether or not that's for, I assume it's for shielding. It's not, can't surely just be for holding down the uh, coax in place. So there's a reason they've done that. It's rather interesting. Some more uh, torque screws here. We'll take those off and see what's on the other side. And I took those four screws off, and it gets rather interesting here. Check it out, these boards. Looks like there's a 0.1 inch header connector. <laughs> totally old school to join the two boards together. I love it. And if we flip that all the way over like that, that damn annoying coax is still physically connected on there. But there's the bottom of that board, which has got a custom fitted plastic uh, holder in there and that just unclips from either side of the board like that and ah that's all and the shield comes out there we go and ta-da and here's the main PCB uh, the logic PCB anyway not the RF one this one's on the bottom uh, wedge between the keypad and the RF section lots of tantalum uh, caps as you'd expect and as you'd expect lots of Motorola parts because Motorola a huge semiconductor manufacturer. They make a whole ton of stuff, so no surprises that uh, uh, pretty much most of the chips on here are going to be Motorola. There's a bitrate uh, generator here. That's an MC14411 uh, uh, bitrate generator. Um, I have no idea what that is. It's a 99 T30. Your guess is as good as mine. I guess you could find it on one of the obsolete uh, component uh, database searches or something like that. Main, it looks like probably some sort of uh, processor up here. It's an SC390101. Your guess is as good as mine. Um, move over. We've got a, what have we got here? Another Motorola branded part, SC404675. No idea. Probably some sort of, uh, one of those is obviously um, some sort of processor. We've got a uh, crystal in there, low frequency stuff. Um, and a couple of more devices, two Motorola devices over here, and an Atmel, which uh, obviously contains the uh, firmware, one would imagine, and that's the connector for the, um, well, for the for that antenna connector, which connected uh, that antenna interface. So it looks like that has some sort of uh, digital interface to those um, pins on the back there. So, um, which I guessed was sort of like the car interface or something like that. So there's the Logic PCB. Pretty basic stuff and uh, pretty much as you'd expect are uh, components. Um, the smallest they get is uh, it looks like um, 0805 uh, technology SOT 23 packages. So, you know, no real ultra miniature 0201s or smaller that they're using these days in modern mobile phones. So let's take a look at the RF board. And the problem with looking at the RF board, of course, is that everything's under these metal cans and they're uh, soldered onto the board so I'd have to desolder those. Ah, couldn't be bothered. It's not that interesting. It's going to have Motorola um, RF uh, stuff in it but everything is uh, very heavily shielded on this board. There's a ton of stuff. They've got an oscillator module there and everything else would be a uh, RF type uh, RF type circuitry. Filter blocks and uh, things like that you'd expect. And there is some additional circuitry under the uh, metal shielding can on the back there. Just some uh, passive uh, type stuff, maybe some uh, RF transistors or something like that as well. But there you go, that's uh, the RF board. And there's, you know, there's a lot of effort that uh, goes into designing an RF board like that. And all the subsections and the filters and the uh, modulators and God knows what is involved in one of these uh, analog uh, mobile phone systems. The RF engineers would uh, have a field day with that, of course, but 
all of that's been replaced um, pretty much with uh, digital communications technology. One of the interesting things by looking at this, it's fairly typical of an engineered uh, PCB of the age, but it, to me it just strikes that they haven't really put a massive amount of engineering into making this thing uh, smaller. I, it's almost as if like they didn't bother. I think they, they probably could have uh, made it uh, smaller and better uh, packaged if they tried, but they've just gone with a, you know, a, a, single, a simple head or, header connector, and they've just really, I, I don't know, I, I just get the impression that if they really tried hard back in those days, they still could have made uh, these analog mobile phones um, even smaller if they uh, maybe did some more uh, custom stuff or things like that maybe they really a good use of uh, double-sided uh, layout design they could have had maybe half the board as the digital section and the other half as the RF or something like that to gain some thickness advantage but you know when you've got a, a huge battery like this to power the damn thing for eight or ten hours or however long it lasted. I don't even think it lasted that, certainly not uh, talk time. Um, standby, I think it probably lasted a day in standby or a day and a half or two or something at best. But geez, yeah, when you're, you know, when you've got that base to work with, oh, this huge heavy battery like this, you just sort of shrug your shoulders and go, eh, who cares? I'll just make my design life easy. Although, that's with hindsight, I guess, back. I'm sure the guys and girls who designed this thing back in uh, would have been the uh, very early 90s. Maybe they, um, you know, they started design on this in, say, 92, 1992 or something like that. I'm sure they're very proud of it, put a lot of effort into it. And uh, it is, pro you know, probably the smallest or one of the smallest uh, analog mobile phones on the market. One of the more interesting things here is to actually look at how thick just this bottom section is. I haven't even taken out this digital board here and you can see the thickness is probably, I don't expect to find much if any circuitry on the bottom, maybe just the ke um, keypad uh, membrane uh, part of it and, uh, and look at the amount of space, the thickness which is wasted in this speaker up here. It's just it's, it's just crazy. If you compare that to a modern, the thickness of a modern mobile phone, just the keypad membrane thing here is as thick as, is the same thickness as a modern mobile phone. It's, it's amazing. So there's quite a bit of wasted space on there I think I'll find when I prize this board out. Well, if you flip the board out here, let's take a look at this. And I, I forgot about the uh, screen, of course, but they've mounted this on a separate board like this with its own little with its own plastic carry and that's taking up a bunch of room and check out the this uh, holder they've got in place with the spring contacts for the speaker down there and just the uh, the advances in technology in speaker and uh, microphone technology has made mobile phones incredibly tiny as well can you imagine having one of those huge things in one of those huge speakers in a modern mobile phone and we're only talking like 1992 1993 uh technology here so you with hindsight you almost get the impression that well couldn't they have found something better or a better solution that was smaller and slimmer i don't know it's to me you know 94 is not that long ago but i guess it is 20 years maybe i'm just uh, you know i I'm just remembering a different age or something like that. But anyway, here's the uh, membrane keypad, which is what I expected. They've got uh, LEDs on there. Looks like they've got some LED uh, backlight. That's quite advanced uh, for its time, I think. Um, little uh, 080, sorry, uh, 1206 uh, package LEDs there. And the microphone down here, once again, you couldn't imagine having a huge microphone insert like that in a modern... Uh, mobile phone. Most of them these days are all the uh, digital uh, microphones and uh, uh, the micro machined ones. Really tiny, really advanced technology. And once again, they've got some discrete wiring here. But yeah, I don't know. I Maybe if they put some more engineering into it, they could have made it smaller, perhaps. But I don't know. Maybe that is a remarkable feat of engineering for 1993 or so. Now, it looks like there's a can, a metal can under there with some extra circuitry. You can see all those pins through there. So, 
may have spoken too soon. The LED display pops off like that, and they've got a looks like they've got a flat flex connector. Fairly, uh, still fairly common to find those in uh, stuff these days. Nothing uh, old school there at all. The I like that you know all these custom plastic clips they've used on these thing. Oh, there we go. So that's that's popped off. There we go. Bit of extra circuitry once again. With you know, there's a fair bit of space on this. If they went, um, if they worked on that layout, uh, you know, put a bit more effort into miniaturizing that layout, they could have put all that stuff on the top, I'm sure, and uh, and made it all smaller. But well, I guess they had their design decisions at the time. Oh no, the LED module is made in Malaysia. And the date code on some of these devices, 9339, that's 1993, 39th week. So that uh, dates the manufacture of this board to at least after that. Interesting, it looks like there's some laser marked Motorola copyright 9241 on there. That's rather curious on a 9339 device. Some of the other devices, the 38th week, 93 there, the 16th week, 93. So we're talking the end of 93, possibly uh, uh, the beginning of 1994 when this board was actually manufactured, giving, you know, a month or two uh, lead time for the devices from the factory to the manufacturing uh, plant to actually uh, assemble this thing at best. And if you compare that with the Nokia 3310, just the speaker alone, look at the th thickness and size of that old school speaker in there compared to the uh, tiny, once again it's a moving coil uh, speaker, but it's a uh, smaller, tinier and just allow these phones to get much, much smaller. And really this is uh, 2000 uh, vintage even before that, so there's only, you know, five or six years uh, difference tops between um, just what speakers were used in phones back then. Amazing. And I can't really uh, remember very clearly back to uh, 94 of what speakers were available back then, but you would have thought that when you're designing something like this mobile phone, you would have thought, look at how much space is taken up by this speaker. That's a real bottleneck in uh, today's technology. Can't we come up with something or find something smaller um, that works? I'm, I'm surprised they couldn't do that in 94. Who knows? So here you have inside the Nokia 3310 and you can see the drastic difference in the technologies there in the RF uh, shielded technology and look how thin they've become. They've sort of turned all of that and we're only talking, you know, five years difference, six years tops or something like that. They've gone from analog technology to GSM uh, digital technology, the sort of, you know, uh, the Nokia, you know, the 5110 or something like that, a bit older, a bit bigger than this, but you can see the differences in that sort of stuff and, and it's all on that one board. They've shrunk all the digital stuff into one little part of this. The RF is much smaller in one part up near the top or something like that. Massive massive difference and as you can see the speaker technology of course much you know much much smaller so they've fitted that in there the microphone is absolutely tiny compared to the microphone that's you know used in this thing can you imagine that on you know taking up a, a ton of space on that board down the bottom here but you could probably still maybe fit it in there these days and the difference in the battery technology of course is massive. The size of one of these modern uh, lithium ion batteries compared to the old NICAD battery pack and the low power uh, technology, the um, decrease in uh, silicon size has meant uh, lower uh, power uh, technology, just vastly, vastly different and uh, SIMS and just the packaging technology, 3D tools that went into this and, uh, you know, 3D design efforts. The membrane keypad, they've made smaller. They haven't got big rubber keys. They've gone to little, uh, more like, uh, more of the uh, tactile um, type uh, keys and just vastly, vastly different. It's amazing. And there's not much in years, you know, there's only five years difference between this analog technology and digital. Incredible. Uh, GSM antenna on the top there coming through these 
um, uh, pogo pins here directly onto the uh, back side, well, the RF section of the board up the top there. So that would be the RF section or one or both of those sections along with the processing down here. And really, you know, that's a vast difference to the analog um, antenna, antenna technology um, that they had only five years earlier. And needless to say, the LCD uh, technology, just uh, totally, totally, you know, <laughs> worlds apart, massive power consumption for LED. That just chews a ton of power, virtually no power, or a couple of milliamps for uh, one of these uh, dot matrix LCD displays. Massive amount of difference in terms of uh, information you can provide for orders of magnitude, many orders of magnitude, um, less power consumption. And just other small differences in packaging technology, like having a, like the power button on the top here with a little uh, tact, little surface mount right angle tact uh, switch down in there, it just enables much, those little things add up to enable much smaller packaging technology. So some of the big drivers in uh, a very quick drop in mobile phone uh, size and massive increase in technology, battery was a big key factor in that, going to these uh, uh, lithium ion uh, batteries, uh, increased integration in the uh, uh, digital uh, GSM, uh, well the uh, converting from analog to digital old school, integration complete in a single IC, uh, as far as the uh, base, as far as the uh, processing section goes, RF section totally shrunk, antennas uh, technology, just a general uh, packaging, surface mount packaging technology, much smaller resistors. If you compare, and just general uh, PCB technology as well, just laying out the board, they've gone from, you know, uh, 08, 05 size components down to uh, 04, 02 or smaller devices on these boards, and just a massive, massive difference. And they've designed it, they put a lot of engineering into integrating this so it's all on one side of the board whereas they were sort of uh, hamstrung they uh, with these and this analog phone they laid it out it's on two sides it's two sides like that they compromise that instantly doubles you know, you know extra 30 40 percent thickness on your board crazy just the shielding um thicknesses here of the you know a, a thick shielding on there once again double-sided they've had to go for the double-sided board there they've used 1.6 millimeter um, PCB they've gone for a thinner uh, PCB here and it all adds up to all these minor things add up to make a huge difference in the size weight power consumption of course modern low power uh, processing technology with the smaller silicon geometries and things like that have enabled a lot of stuff but wow and you add on the smaller speaker and uh, microphone technology, the LCDs, the tactile uh, dome keypad instead of the uh, rubber membrane one, and bingo, you got yourself much smaller, high-tech, modern mobile phone you can actually fit in your pocket as opposed to one of these bricks. So that's a look inside one of the last of the analog era mobile phones, the Motorola Ultra Sleek 966. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to check out uh, high-res photos of the turn uh, teardown, they're available on my uh, Flickr photo account. So check that out, and I'll catch you next time.